All right, all right. We got House Divided, the second episode of the fall of 2023. And today we're going to be talking about the quick reactions to the coaches poll that USA Today put out. So, um, TZ sent me a tweet with the uh, coaches poll from, of course, on three, just copy and paste it and used it to help get themselves some notoriety, but um, they copied and pasted the coaches poll from USA Today, and let's take a look at it. So here we go, we got the coaches poll. Can you see the coaches poll on your screen? Yes, I can. Okay, so um, five things that pop up when you see this coaches poll. Um, well, I don't know about five things, but... Uh, three things. Give me three things. I don't know about... I don't have a certain number of things to give you. I'll just tell you what I see. Okay. Um, and again, I, I am going into this without actually having researched, looked at these, or truly analyzed these teams, um, of what's going on at this exact moment. But just my initial reaction is uh, Florida State being number eight. Don't I don't like it. Um, but... I do have to, and, and I guess I'm learning from my mistakes of the preseason poll last year that we kind of talked about and did or whatever. I guess I have to understand maybe how they see their road going during the season because they do play in a super weak conference. But I still don't see them. How they, they must have an early season matchup if they want to be in the top 10 matchup or something. I, don't, I haven't looked at the schedule because, yeah, don't see how Florida State is ranked number eight. Um Washington, honestly, should be ranked a little bit higher. I mean, they're returning a bunch of everything. And like I said, the quarterback as well. The Texas at 12, I don't truly have an issue with. Um, yeah, I had to think about what team that was at 23. Tulane, I, I, don't, I haven't watched anything about them, so I can't say they should or shouldn't be in there. But just off of this reaction, they shouldn't be in there. TCU, I feel like lost a lot. Um, so I don't see them having a good success year again. But as far as, like I said, Georgia being one, Michigan being two, us in Alabama three, four, and even LSU at five, I would have no issue with that. Um, again, I didn't watch too much of Penn State to say that. I don't even agree with them being a number seven, but yeah. Um, and then based off of last year, just, just jump that at me right now too. OU 19 seems a little bit high. But... I mean, that's all I really got right now. Like I said, this is uh, – I'm trying to say I don't see how they get that high, but also I maybe – like I said, they return what I – maybe I, I – stuff I don't know, and then maybe it's how they see the season playing out. I I, I don't know what goes into these polls or what they're, what they're thinking of in these polls. But, yeah, it, it does seem a little bit crazy to me. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the preseason polls. We talked about that last year, and then this just further solidifies my point. Yeah, so – um, definitely don't like preseason polls for this particular reason, but to your point, there's probably some preseason, there's probably some early season matchups that they're trying to make some TV ratings for. I don't like Georgia and Alabama in the one and three spot. Uh, Stetson Bennett. Hey, I, why is that? Stetson Bennett wasn't all world, but he was the returning clear starter on their offense. And I feel like they're going to lose more with him gone than not. And so having them number one, I don't know that I agree with. Michigan, I'm fine with because they're returning everybody. So I think they actually should probably be in the one spot. Alabama has the huge, huge question mark at quarterback. They've got wide receiver question marks. So... I'm not sold at Alabama's number three. Now, does every year Alabama roll out an awesome squad that's probably going to win the West? Yes, they're in contention. But the reason I don't think they're that high is because I do see LSU being the actual cream for the West this year. Um, they're returning their offense, and their quarterback has had another year in the system. He's going to be that much more polished. Um, I think they snuck up on people last year because they had a new quarterback, but 
he's he's improving. Yeah, I'm looking at LSU to win, to probably win the West or to be a head-to-head matchup with Alabama for the West again. Um, I think Ohio, they saw that LSU Brian Kelly video and didn't take him seriously. What? They saw Brian Kelly dancing in those videos and didn't take him seriously. Right, right. I definitely like, thought it was a joke. Um, but <laughs> they did also lose to A&M in humiliating fashion at the end of the season, which is not good on anybody's resume. So they'll have the stain of that going into this year. Ohio State, I'm not sold on either. The quarterback issue, they, they have a new quarterback, and yes, they have been pretty good about plugging and playing on the quarterback position, any dude, but there has to be a it, drop off. I mean, so that's the reason why I push back on you as far as on the Alabama part and it's in the case you make for Ohio State is as of right now I have to give them the benefit of the doubt that um they will be able to plug somebody in and and that person will be fine, if not NFL draft pick in a couple of years because that's what they've been doing. Georgia I get. I I, I do I do get what you're saying because I haven't seen them plug and play yet. Like as as far as in that position. So I, I, I get I get why there's some skepticism for you on Georgia, but as far as Alabama, Ohio State, I just gotta get into the benefit of the doubt there. Because yeah. they, they haven't had any drop off in the last decade, it seems like since they started caring about quarterbacks and passing. I'm not saying that they're not gonna be plug and play and good. I'm just saying I don't think they'll be plug and play three and four. At the start of the season, I don't think they deserve that. Especially when I see what LSU brings back, what Michigan brings back, what South Car- or not South Carolina, um, USC brings back. I feel much more confident in what they're bringing back than what. Yeah, USC think. brings back that same defense. That's why I think they didn't get ranked high because I don't think anybody questions their offense. Yeah, their but defense was. But if, if this is and to your point earlier about who knows what the rationale is behind this poll, if I'm looking at SC schedule, I see Pac-12 teams. And I'm thinking they're going to run through the Pac-12, no problem. Um, their their toughest competitions at 14, 15, and 11. Phoenix is good at Washington, so they'll be explosive on offense. But they're still Washington. Utah, I'm not sure if is Cam Rising back. He sure is. Okay, so they'll be solid, and their team has been solid, so they'll be a good team. Oregon has Bo Nix as quarterback. You can never accept them to do anything good with Bo Nix as their quarterback. Um, but Pac-12, I like, so that's, this is, you, talk, you say that because there are potentially four first-round draft picks on those teams at quarterback? No. Bo Nix is Bo not Nix, a first-round right, quarterback. Yes. Unfortunately, Kyle Bo Nix is being spoken about and well-regarded by NFL people. Yeah. They're I get, I, I'm not saying I don't agree with you. They're that just saying that. That's that's that stuff they do every year to, to boost somebody up and have them in the green room looking stupid. He's not really a first round quarterback. He is a and, and neither was Will Levis, but hey, crazy stranger things have happened. And that's why they had Will Levis sitting in the green room looking stupid. But it still doesn't mean Will Levis wasn't productive and good. That's what I'm saying. And being being looked at it in those lights. Yeah, but so, no, Will Levis think, well, Will, be a first round quarterback, but it also as far as being a college quarterback, I I, I Will, think Levis, is, of Will Levis is better than Bo Nix. No way those two are in comparison. Will Levis played way better than Bo Nix in the conference that Bo Nix had to abandon ship because they were getting rid of him. So And my driveway is hotter than the street. So it doesn't like I said, either way, it's the same thing. I I don't know what that was, but and then seven Penn State, they're always overrated. So this will be another overrated season for them. They'll start out hot and then flounder. Florida State, I don't remember what they did last year, so I'm not sure how they get to be eight. Um, Clemson, I can be optimistic because they still have Cade Klubinick, so um, he came in and in that huh? They play in the ACC. Right. They, well, they play in the ACC, and they're still the, the best team in the ACC, so I don't have a problem with that. Tennessee, I'm okay with 10. They'll probably end up the season higher. Um, they do play in the East, so... Who's their quarterback? Um, Milton. And, and again, so why don't you have questions about that? Because I, I've seen I've seen Milton play. I've seen Milton play, and I've seen, I've seen him throw eighty yards on his knees. Well, too, I haven't seen him play good football, college football over a good period of time either. So the, the over same a period of time, that's true. Over a period of time, that's true. But in the bowl game, he looked fine. I'm okay with Tennessee again. Ten- I'll take Bo Nix over Joe Milton. Oh, you crazy! 
That's that's nonsense. You, you, that's a screaming for rating, Stephen A. Smith. Um, no, that's not screaming for rating. That's just telling you that to me, there's no difference between the two. I, I don't think Joe, Joe like Nicks I said, is a terrible quarterback. Terrible. Like he has made terrible decision maker, but as far as the ability to play, if that's like I said, he's no different than Stetson Bennett. Put him in the right situation, and he makes the right plays and choices. He can be more than more than suitable to get the job done at that position at the college level. The, so, but the, you're, Joe, you're Joe missing knows, out. Joe, no, no, no. You Joe, just called out Joe, what Stetson Richard. Bennett's superpower is, and then try to demean it because Stetson Stetson Bennett isn't an otherworldly quarterback, but he's a smart quarterback, and that's what Bo Nix has never been—a smart quarterback. Bo Nix has been that's a talented. That's something, that can, that's something that can be developed, though. You can't develop uh, 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 taking half a second off a of forty-yard dash time or jumping an extra ten inches. But you yeah, but if athleticism was the key, then Haynes King would be the starting quarterback for Texas A&M. Athleticism alone does not make a good quarterback. You have to, be, have to actually be able to throw the football. Oh, that's what I'm and saying. Decision. decision making is the only thing he hasn't been good at. Decision making is something that can be taught and you can get better at over the course of time. Becoming a better athlete is what I'm saying. Is something that can be done but you can you can get better at making decisions at the quarterback which drastically improves your play is what i'm saying joe milton is a super world he's anthony richardson a super world athlete but sucks to play in the position to me he's just he's just wrong that's what i'm saying okay well you're saying they're similar and they suck at playing the position then i agree with that but if you're saying that uh yeah, Nicks, the experience of Nicks over, over Joe Milton not not having experience in, like I said, he's Anthony Richardson to me. That, that's what <laughs> I, would, I see Joe Milton. I would take the potential of Anthony Richardson over Bo Nix any day because I've seen what Bo Nix does on the football field. Um, Texas at 12, to me, is spectacular because this means either they win the Big 12 and leave out as the high horse or they turn into no, the same. Oh, so, so we're, 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 we're going to go into discussions about teams. So this year um, – like I said, in previous years, I have had no expectations on my team. Um, but this year, um, with everything, how everything is set up, the way the conference played out, uh, oh, you look this and that, yada, yada. To me, if we don't leave out of here Big 12 champions, it's, it's a failed season. Okay. So, that I mean, that's the only way you get uh, Big 12 champions is start out, start out number 12 or higher and get to the playoffs. Like, this is a playoff year or bust. For me, as far well, as that, so I won't say playoff year or bust. But if you win the Big Twelve, saying. you get to the playoffs. I, I get what you're saying, but I, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm keeping it short side, short minded. If we don't win the Big Twelve, it has been a failed season. Yeah, we can't get to the playoffs if we don't win the. That's what I'm saying. All that stuff comes after winning the Big Twelve. But if we don't at least our Big Twelve champion, it's a failed season. Okay, uh, Notre Dame, they they. Uh, they proved me wrong. I was actually happy about this because I didn't want um, Marcus Freeman. It's Freeman. It's not Freeman, is it? I think it is. I didn't want Marcus, whatever his last name is, maybe it's Freeman, to to not succeed. So I'm happy that they were able to succeed. I just don't like Notre Dame, so I'll say that. I hope they suck, but I hope he somehow is good and they suck, which is impossible. Um, so B13. They need that for TV ratings. Oh. I know you're going to in ratings or in order, so I'm about to jump a little bit. But um, if I'm not mistaken, with all the conference realignment stuff, Oregon State doesn't is still in the Pac-12, right? All of those schools in the Pac-12 are still in the Pac-12. Well, you know, well, I'm talking about going after the realignment is what I was saying. They're, they'll be they're one of the four schools left in the Pac-12. As of right now, yes. And that ranked number 18 starts with Pogo, and nobody wants that school. It's not that nobody wants them; it's that. They don't bring anything that you can't get with or you can't get already with Oregon. So there's no purpose for them, because Oregon State is good at football and baseball. So um, any baseball conference would be welcome to have Oregon State and any football program. It's just like getting Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State is is not the best at anything, but they're good at everything. So Oklahoma State has a conference though. That's what I'm saying. Right. Well, I'm just saying like as far as the the profile, like. Oregon State and Oklahoma State, same colors, same basic team, just in different states. So, but Oklahoma State is in a place that is central to a group in a region for TV, and Oregon is in Oregon, and nobody cares about any football in Oregon. Um, it just isn't. It isn't a thing, unfortunately for them. Sucks for them. Um, their fan base is letting them down. So. 
Anyway, back to the poll. 14 Utah. We'll do four, Utah and Oregon. One of those two schools should win, should be on the other side of the field of USC in the Pac-12 championship. So hopefully it's uh, Utah. I would like Utah to play USC in that Pac-12. I, I, only because I don't believe in, in USC's defense, the Pac-12 is kind of wide open to me. Mm. I feel like every one of those teams can score on any other team. Is this is who who it'll be who has the ball last type game? Well, or, so. Oregon proved that theory wrong last year when they went to Georgia talking talking trash and got smacked up. So no 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 no. I'm talking about between the Pac-12 teams amongst themselves. That's what I'm oh, saying. They can score on anybody in their conference. The the people, USC can beat Washington. Washington can beat USC. Washington, Utah can beat. That's what I'm saying. Like okay. each Oregon, U Utah, Washington, and USC all have great offenses to be York. You know, I mean, good, better than average offense to me. And they're led by, I, I know you don't like both Knicks, but, you know, good established quarterbacks. So okay. the Pac-12 is open to me. Like, I think USC, I, I, I know people are shooting them in, but because their defense is so weak, I can see them losing two games. Yeah, the Alex got, Grinch thing is probably not working 50, 50, 50, 51. out. That's what I'm saying. Well, we'll see if Alex Grinch is able to turn the defense around because he did do well in the Pac-12 before running the defenses. So maybe he'll figure it out year two. All right, 16-17, TCU, Kansas State. Um, TCU, I don't know why they're up this high. Um, there was a fluke last year. They won't be that good this year. So they'll be out of the polls quickly. Kansas State is always good. They're probably somewhere between the 17 and 25 range is where they belong. They'll compete for the Big 12 championship because they always do. Oregon State, they'll, they'll probably have a chip on their shoulder. So I hope they do well and can knock out the uh, people abandoning them. Um, 19 OU. So OU is tough because I didn't see, like, and I get that Levy is supposed to be an offensive mind, but I'm questioning whether or not it was Levy or if it was Lane Kiffin and Levy was just getting the credit that he didn't deserve. Um, we'll see. They got the Dylan Gabriel experiment year two. Um, Wide receivers, I don't know that I know a wide receiver on their squad. That's problematic. Um, don't know a running back on their squad. And their defense did not look like a Brent Venables defense last year. So hopefully they fix that. So 19, I'm fine with just because they're OU. Like, they're going to get that ranking. They're going to be a better team than 19 this year. Last year was just a horrible year for them. Um, I see a minimum of them winning eight to nine games this year. That doesn't get you better than 19, then. Eight to nine wins does not get you better than 19. That's 19. No. So, uh, but I'm just saying, I, they, they, they'll be better than last I, year, I, I, are you assuming? I said at minimum. And I said at minimum, so they're obviously they can win more games than that. That's what I'm saying. They're, they'll be a more, uh, they'll be a better quality team than what people, like I said, last year to me was a fluke year for them and how they look. And they'll, and they'll be a much better team, a competitive team all year long. Got it. ACC, North Carolina, I think they'll be better than 20. I think they'll actually be the team to play against Clemson in the ACC championship. Um, so, you, so you believe in that quarterback? I do believe in Drake May. Um, I've I've watched a number of his games and he looks solid to me. So I believe in Drake May. Now, do I believe he's a biased to me? Huh? Seems biased to me. Why is it biased? You got the same name as your son. <laughs> that that is true, um, but I don't know that I ever noticed that. Um, if that was the case, then I would vote for Drake to be in the top twenty-five of football. Um, so, and that ain't the case. But anyway, I believe in North Carolina. Uh, I think y'all, I think their coach is, are solid. And uh, y'all messed up getting rid of him. Uh, so anyway, go, go Mac Brown. Wisconsin, I don't know anything about their football team. Ole Miss is Ole Miss. They could be great or they could be terrible. It is, that's Lane Kiffin teams. Tulane. They're they're like a spoiler team for OU, so I'm not sure if that's why they're getting this love because they keep going into Norman and nearly beating OU every year. Um, <laughs> Tech, I have no idea why they're 24. Not certain. 
I feel like at a certain point in time, it's just like, you just, like they, the coaches are filling out the battles. Yeah, they just start marking things. Yeah. And they're like, uh, name a school. Oh, this one. Oh, this and this one. is what I was saying. Like, maybe I, did, I didn't pay. If I don't, obviously, I, I have a, a job and other things that I have to do in real world life. So I don't get to pay attention and read all the team's news. So, yeah, there I do have some, you know, connection, I guess, to, to Texas Tech. But, yeah, I didn't pay. I didn't see what they did all last year. So it's hard for me to really give an opinion on them as a team because I don't know anything about them, even though they're in the, the conference. Right. And then, I, I know they beat Texas last year. <laughs> you said they beat Texas? Yeah. Did they really? If I'm not mistaken, I'm sure. I think that's why Tech and Texas fans have, 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 have beat this year during Twitter. Oh, uh, got it. I'm, I just, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I just thought it was because they were getting abandoned and then now their conference is getting saved and now they think they're somehow benefiting from that at any rate. Um, the, and they had a first round draft pick and Texas hasn't had a first round draft pick in 50 years. Um, until this year. Huh? Until this year. Yeah. Until B. John. Um, all right. Yeah. They beat us the whole time. 37, 34. Oh, nice. And then last but not least is my alma mater, A&M. And I have no idea why they're. Right. Before you say what you're going to say, let me speak because you're going to say, oh, we're going to be this and horrible and that and all this stuff like that. I, I feel the same way about a and as I do OU. They had a, a really bad year last year, and they will be a solid team this year. Um, I always thought, for me, just what, I, what I've seen, I thought Wyman was always the better choice, and I thought you should have just let him get his lumps earlier in the year. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I already know how you feel about that position. Uh, defense is one of those things that always can fluctuate year to year, so you might be not good one year and then play better the next year, just like I said, just doing the system and being more comfortable in it. Um, yes, I do play in the SEC, so it is a tough uh, conference, but I feel like y'all going to be a solid team this year. And, yep. That's, so, that's solid, the... enough, not, not solid enough that Jimbo's going to get, get to keep his job. Uh, yeah, uh, so, and he probably will do that. He'll scrape by just enough. I don't like it. I don't like the 25 ranking because it just sets us up for failure again. We are never a team that works well when we're ranked. Even if it's 25, we do better when we're unranked and we just sneak up on people. People under underestimate us. So I'm, I'm not happy about this ranking. And um, our schedule. Our schedule doesn't look good to me for us to have success. We play too many good teams and... We're too unproven at too many different places. Our offense could be better, but it's hard to not be better when your offense was 96. In the country, out of like 120 schools, means we're terrible. Our defense was great against the pass, but terrible against the run. And with Alabama not having a quarterback, I feel like we're going to get a run-heavy Alabama. Um, we did well against teams that passed. Example, LSU, because we played that 3-3-5, and so we've got – Five defensive backs back there. So who are you going to throw to when we got five people covering your three wide receivers? We should be able to stop the pass. But then we had these undersized linebackers in our short line trying to stop this 230-pound running back, and we're getting blocked man on man. So if we go back with 3-3-5, I, I see this being a bad situation. Um, Petrino said yesterday that he's going to be calling plays, and he's been calling plays all spring. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, well, there's clarity on that. So Petrino is calling the plays. He, he said that. Jimbo didn't say that. Jimbo said the head coach always is involved in the play calling, whatever that means. But Petrino allegedly said yesterday, yes, I'm going to call plays, and I've been calling plays all fall. So we'll see. Um, first game is against New Mexico State. If we don't put half a bill on them, like – we suck. Like it better be fifty to seven. So it's gonna, it's gonna end up being twenty eight to twenty one is something like that. How we score and everyone's gonna pretend that it's because we we ran a vanilla offense and didn't want to give away too much before we go to Miami. But I have a feeling we're gonna be one and one after that Miami game because we got to go to Miami and we barely escaped last year with the win at home. I don't know if we're going to be able to escape then. So anyway, we could go through and I could spend a whole episode talking about A&M's schedule and where I think we're going to slip up. But 
I'm going to say a and is going to finish somewhere between 5-7 and seven and 7-5. Seven and five. Anything higher than 7-5 and five has been a spectacular year for me. Uh, what's your thoughts on Texas? Uh, Texas has to win the Big 12 for you, but what's their record winning the Big 12? I mean, I haven't looked at the uh, schedule. The Give me the record. Game. Give me the record. I mean, I'd say at least 10 wins for sure. So 10 and 2. Minimum. 10 and 2? Yeah. Who's the two losses? Like I said, of course, we, I, I know we play Alabama, so that obviously could be one of the losses. Okay. And then there could be one more in the Big 12. Who's Who's the one team that is going to get the W against y'all this year? Oklahoma game is always – that's always 50-50-ish to me. Okay, so you're saying Oklahoma? I mean, it could be. Is that who you think is going to give y'all the, the only loss of y'all season aside from Alabama? This ain't no bet. It ain't like uh, Vegas is coming I to. I can't look at the schedule because you, you want me to say Wyoming? Yes, yeah, say Wyoming. If that's what you think, don't y'all got Rice first game? Is that going to be the loss? <laughs> yeah, it'd be the loss of Sharkeesian's job. <laughs> 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 I mean, so we play. Um, yeah, Oklahoma, if I had to say one, Oklahoma looks like it, or even a team like Iowa State. Okay. So we gotta play. We gotta go on the road and and road games equal close games and Sharks' record in close games while being in Texas has been horrible, okay. to say the least. But also, why this is a big year for Texas? Not I'm not just because we're going to the SEC the next year, but because of the quarterback position. Quinn Ewers needs to play good and shine so that he can go to the NFL draft and get drafted, so that there's an a log jam of quarterback. Because I'm sure Archie ain't trying to sit around for a couple of years. And then Malik Murphy stayed this year when apparently he was offered uh, millions dollars, millions and things like that by the SEC program. So if Quinn Ewers doesn't play good, and what what does he do? That's what I'm saying. Does, does he does he get pulled? Does somebody else go in there? And so then that's what I'm saying. This is a big year on multiple fronts for Texas. So we need to win, like I said, 10 games, win the big 12, and – Maybe you get that playoff spot, but big, big, the Big Twelve is what I'm putting my min- minimum at for sure. All right. Well, appreciate the time. Y'all have a good rest of your day, and we will talk the next hot topic. <laughs>